bright colors and happiness of many December films, January looks downright gloomy and scary. The Devil Inside, Contraband, Haywire, The Grey, Underworld Awakening, Man on a Ledge. Yes, it's definitely time to hibernate. Wake me up in time for the Oscars. So, you want to redo The Exorcist, but you can't afford the rights? Bam! The Devil Inside. Now, here's a story we can all relate to. I'm sure every one of us has wanted to perform a series of exorcisms in order to figure out what caused our mother to kill three men during her exorcism. Blair Witch goes... Blair Witch, as the exorcist gets a paranormal activity twist. Another intrepid fake documentary crew takes on another mystery of the unknown, this time covering the technical and scientific aspects of exorcising a demon and puts you right in the room. And we all know exorcisms are the new zombie. Despite being named after NXS's fifth best song and having a poster demonstrating a popular cunnilingus technique, the movie looks really creepy. It stars Fernanda Andrade, also known for her work in the film Why Am I Doing This? We'll give you a few seconds to write your own joke. The plot of this film seems all too convenient for the post-holiday water cooler discussions. Oh, hey, Paul, how was your uh, trip home for the holidays? Oh, man, you know how my mom gets. She's possessed. <laughs> Tell me about it. My mom gets all kooky if the tree's crooked, you know? No, seriously, my mom is possessed. Oh. Mark Wahlberg is back, and he's got a run to do, or a job, or a con, or a score to settle, or all of those things. Here comes the movie equivalent of those spy novels they sell at airport bookstores. It's got a clever cover, or poster in this case, and it looks pretty good, and everything's interesting when you're circling Denver waiting for snow to clear. But let's take a look inside. What happened, Andy? I was running something, and I dumped the package. You know, when I stopped doing runs, you promised me you were gonna stay out of this. They're gonna kill me. They're not gonna kill me. Yes, this looks like a perfect movie. A perfect movie needs three things. First of all, a lead who's the best of the best. You are the best of the best. Second, an exciting and dangerous life that he's just done with, walking away. But the proudest day of my life was when you turned legit. You started a family and you got out of the life but he's dragged back in because they didn't know who they were messing with and fucked with the wrong guy. You think you're the only guy with a gun? Have you ever mentioned my wife and my kids again? No, I'm done. When they fuck with the wrong guy, that's the perfect trio. That makes the best kind of movie. And in case you missed the plot, the story is about an international smuggler who's given up the life, who's called back into international smuggling to internationally smuggle his brother out of trouble with evil international smugglers, who've apparently met their international match. The film by Antoine Fuqua, I assume, but we'll never look up, looks to make the most of Giovanni Ribisi's dead eyes, and Wahlberg looks like he got whatever the opposite of Botox is injected into his forehead. Joyful noise raises the roof and puts the hallelujah in the dead couple of weeks after Christmas when everybody's tired of Jesus and no one wants to go to the movies. This film illustrates that all-too-asked familiar question, how do you win a gospel competition? Be more like Glee. Directed by the guy who had that pet rat in the abyss, Joyful Noise, the big screen adaptation of its own soundtrack, is about two choir directors, Queen Latifah and Dolly Parton, who compete over who should lead the black gospel choir. Let's see, uh, Queen Latifah, Dolly Parton, gospel choir, black, well, we've come full circle. White people are now teaching black people how to be sassy. And to help the white woman out, they've brought in a half Puerto Rican kid. You'll want to bring your willing suspension of disbelief. This movie is full of gospel versions of pop songs your aunt just discovered. It's sure to put a shake in the hips of the abstinence crowd. But the big news here is Dolly Parton's return to the big screen. After defining the working woman with big tits during an era in which Burt Reynolds was handsome and Dom DeLuise was funny, Dolly took some time off to start an amusement park for hipsters to go to ironically. Unfortunately for Dolly's comeback, she's been painfully miscast here as someone you want to look at for an hour and a half. Now, where have I seen her before? Da! Yes. I mean, I look at her and I just hear Land of Confusion. <laughs> 